Okay, well, um, bonjour tout le monde, um, and good morning to all of my federal, well, federal, my colleagues there, uh, provincial and territorial colleagues, and to everyone who's here today, uh, bienvenue tout le monde. Let me begin by acknowledging that we're gathered in the... Okay. Uh, let me um, let me acknowledge that we're gathered on the uh, traditional and unceded territory of the Algonquin people, and we're pleased to connect with um, you from various uh, territories and communities which you are in. And for those of us who are settlers or immigrants of Canada, it's important to recognize that Indigenous peoples have always been here and that we all have a role to play in reconciliation. Let me begin by saying it's absolutely a pleasure to welcome you to Ottawa. Now, I've been hosting these uh, federal, provincial, territorial ministers meetings since uh, 2020 virtually. And uh, my notes as I read them here say, today marks the first time that I am hosting this in person. However, um, out of an abundance of uh, caution this morning, uh, because I was feeling um, a little under the weather, I thought I would take a test. And of course, uh, the test came back this morning uh, testing positive for COVID-19. So in respect of the um, Ontario Health Guidelines, I am now doing this meeting virtually. And uh, I'm so sorry, and you have no idea how sad I feel because I was so thrilled about um, you know getting here to Ottawa last night and to be with all of you, my colleagues uh, there in person today. I'm glad that uh, we are still able to do this. And uh, I now join the others who are also doing it virtually. Many of you are in Ottawa, others are virtually. Um, so uh, thank you so much, and again, uh, welcome. But in person, you're in really terrific hands. Uh, my Deputy Minister, uh, Rob Stewart, is there. And uh, of course, uh, my Chief of Staff, Kevin Kuhn, is also there. So, um, so uh, we've got uh, a wonderful delegation in person of colleagues here from Ottawa, but uh, I regret I'm not able to join you in person. Now, all of our portfolios uh, as uh, trade ministers are business focused and we share the same objective that our success is the success of Canadian businesses of all sizes and entrepreneurs and our innovators and uh, who we support. And I don't think I need to tell all of you in this room how important international, excuse me, trade is. Je n'ai besoin de vous expliquer l'importance du commerce international. Our workers, one in six jobs in Canada are related to trade. And for our economy, this makes up 67.4% of Canada's GDP. Canada's trade has been growing. Our trade has increased by over 22% over 2021. We export over a trillion dollars in goods and services around the world. Export success is business success is job creation success. We've seen incredible growth as well for Canadian small businesses in global trade. BDC actually recently did a report um, that says small businesses that export have shown to have higher sales, they grow faster, hire more people, and they're more resilient during economic downturns. And as those numbers show, while Canada has enjoyed success, and particularly success for small businesses in global trade, I think everyone in this room also shares with me that uh, we always strive to do better. And as ministers serving the business community, our job is to create the best possible conditions for even greater success so that our businesses of all sizes, but particularly our small businesses, can participate in trade and international trade and that trade indeed can expand, not just in the new export categories, but into new global markets. And throughout Canada's history, support for our trade works when we take a Team Canada approach. It's because when it comes to Canada's economic prosperity, whether it's our businesses, our exporters, our workers, I think they all count on our collaboration. And this Team Canada approach is one that yields prosperity to our country and they support our businesses. Um, and, uh, and, and I think that's really terrific. And today's meeting, I think, is uh, about in the spirit of working together on the challenges that the businesses face today and about how we work together so that we can um, discover new opportunities for growth um, in. Excuse me, I just accidentally muted. And as we look at our trade landscape, I thought I would start with the United States, our largest trading partner and close ally. Our economies have been deeply integrated for many years now, with companies on both sides of the border participating in supply chains for major industries. And we've seen bilateral trade increase under the new Canada-US-Mexico trade agreement. 
indeed trade with the United States have reached over a trillion dollars in 2022. And if you think about this, it's $3.4 billion in goods and services that cross the Canada-US border every single day. Or another way to put it is $141 million an hour. Global markets, particularly in the US, have made it really clear that they want and they need more of Canada. Our goods, our services, our innovation, and Canada indeed is also seen a leader around the world and leading the way in the green industrial transformation. And I think all of you know this better than I, because all of this comes from the terrific businesses and exporters and people in your provinces and territories, the enormous strengths that they bring, whether it's critical minerals to batteries, to green steel and aluminum, uh, to AI, agriculture, energy, clean tech, agri-tech, and, uh, and just so much more. Nos voisins sont également conscients de ce potentiel et c'est pourquoi le Canada collabore avec les États-Unis pour exporter ces possibilités. Let me take a moment to speak about the passage of uh, the U.S.'s Inflation Reduction Act, or the IRA. I think that this has created enormous opportunity for Canada with its deliberate focus on strategic sectors that will build out the green economy. These industries we know are changing, but it also means that their supply chains are changing. But the changing nature of these supply chains, I believe is a great opportunity for Canada to build together into the United States and to leverage the collective work that we have been doing together to build out that green economy and to create great jobs. It's one of the reasons that Canada has invested in clean energy, clean technologies, and these investments are going to ensure that Canada will develop our own supply chains in these emerging sectors. And our challenge is to make sure that Canadian businesses are fully integrated into these supply chains. That's one way to ensure that Canadian businesses remain indispensable to the value creation, not just here at home in Canada, but in the United States and globally as well. And Canada, of course, is not just a strong, reliable partner to the United States, but to partners around the world. Canada currently has 15 free trade agreements that cover 51 countries. Taken together, they provide Canadian businesses and exporters with access to global markets, totaling about 1.5 billion consumers. And you, many of you heard me say, in fact, you might have said it yourself, that Canada is the only G7 country with a free trade agreement with every other G7 country. And uh, we are still at negotiating tables pursuing other trade agreements that will open up more access for Canadian businesses and exporters. I'm pleased to share that um, in my meetings, my regular meetings with partners, whether they be the European Union or the countries that, are, that form the CPTPP, Canadian trade is increasing in those markets and there's a lot of optimism. One of the key areas that I want us to uh, focus on, however, is the Indo-Pacific. Canada is looking to diversify trade uh, and our relationships into that region. It's the fastest growing region in the world. By 2030, it's gonna be home to two thirds of the global middle class. And by 2040, it's gonna account for over half of the world's GDP. As you know, uh, we're at negotiations right now with Indonesia bilaterally. It's a country that has a population of about 280 million people. We're gonna to aim to conclude that by the end of 2024. We're also at the negotiating table with the Association of Southeast Asian Nations or otherwise uh, known as ASEAN. The prime minister and I just recently returned from ASEAN. And during that visit, we announced that Canada is gonna lead five Team Canada trade missions to five different countries in the region next year. Very excited about that. We'll head to Vietnam, Indonesia, Philippines, Malaysia, and South Korea. These trade missions will be an incredible opportunity for Canadian businesses from coast to coast to enter into those markets. I'm really excited to uh, work together with uh, my PT colleagues uh, to capitalize on these opportunities. I believe it is through our collaboration that we're going to uh, be the best partners in supporting our businesses, our exporters, our workers to get into these markets. I'm looking forward to uh, working together to identify uh, the best market opportunities in these countries. Uh, together, I hope we're going to be able to bring the best Canadian businesses from your provinces and territories, uh, from coast to coast, that are ready to take advantage of these opportunities. And I'm looking forward to also working to, to attract investment into Canada. And as I said earlier, when it comes to growing businesses and expanding trade, particularly our small businesses, I, I see us as Team Canada. And there's lots we can do to lift up Canadian businesses and not, of course, just um, in the United States and the Indo-Pacific, but in many other markets. And, uh, and uh, with that, 
I'm going to stop. We're going to uh, start the meeting. Um, and maybe the final point I would make is uh, when businesses succeed, Canada succeed, our local economies, our regional economies uh, succeed. And, uh, and I really am looking forward to uh, working with all of you as my colleagues. Thanks so much.